For every concept car that makes it into production, thousands of others don't. And behind every single one of them, a master designer has poured their heart, soul, and thousands of hours of experience into it. For them, giving their first ever design pitch can only happen the once, and it might just be the most important and nerve-wracking thing in the world. For Thomas, that day is today. Mom, check it out! This one's going on the fridge for sure. He's still got a long way to go. <laughs> You're watching Throttleheads. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the Polestar 1. And this is the BMW i -X. These are rolling concept cars that you can actually own and drive on the street. Both are a cocktail of carbon fibre and exotic materials. Both have futuristic, highly complicated powertrains, and both represent a step toward the future for each brand. The brand in this case being Polestar a new EV performance car manufacturer whose first car, the Polestar 1, isn't actually an EV. In this case, the Polestar 1, a limited-run flagship, is a very complicated plug-in hybrid that Polestar claims can propel its 5,155-pound body to 100 kilometers per hour in as low as 4.2 seconds. So this rare and beautiful work of art, kindly provided by our friends at Polestar Toronto Grand Touring Automobiles, represents an exciting new eco-friendly way to spend about $200,000 Canadian. But if you want to hit 100 kilometers per hour, uh, even slower, the well-established and equally unique looking BMW i8 will do it in a claimed 4.6 seconds. It's mid-engined, also all-wheel drive, has doors that go up like this, and this one has a roof that plops off at the press of a button. And a huge thank you to the kind people at BMW Markham, part of the FAF group, for letting us feature it. So, two reasonably quick, very expensive, head-turning flagships. Our question today, who did it better? And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, the BMW i8 looks like a supercar. Doesn't quite boogie like a supercar, and it costs $170,000 Canadian. But think of the revenue you get back from renting it out to TikTokers on Turo. <laughs> yes. This car is quick and more expensive than the i8, but at least it doesn't look like a $180,000 fidget spinner. This car is automatically cool. Why? Because it is the car, as we wrote in the title of our last video, that is powered by everything. Up front is a Volvo 2.0-liter four-cylinder that is supercharged and turbocharged, making 326 horsepower and 384 pound-feet of torque. Attached to that is a starter alternator, making an extra 71 horsepower and 119 pound-feet of torque. And then in the back are two independent electric motors, adding an extra 232 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque. All told, the Polestar 1 is making a combined output of 619 horsepower and 738 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty much double the horsepower of the i8, and actually just the four-cylinder motor alone is 
almost as powerful as James's entire car. Okay, it is a little bit underpowered, but shift it into sport mode, and the 1.5 litre turbocharged three cylinder behind me comes alive, and you realize that 369 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque. And that power serves to all four wheels, so I can come into a turn, and I've got the confidence to put it down. And it comes on smoothly, and it doesn't even sound that bad. And the odd number cylinders end up creating quite a unique sound, like the five cylinder in the RS3 of the TTRS. This is a three cylinder. That's not important. What's important about the i8 is the perception of it and that it needs to look fast. And it does. And forget about the billionaire doors for a moment. I'm talking about the actual design of the car. It has specially designed airflow channels that make it look like it's moving even when it's standing still. This one, for example, I can near as much fit my whole arm into. But, and a lot of people will say it's difficult to get in and out of, but owners will agree with me that there is a special knack to it. First of all, you put on your get-in helmet, and voila, it's as easy as that. And there's even a special bit here to place it once you're done. This car really impresses me. Everything is just different about it. The way that it delivers the power, those two electric motors in the rear mean that it just kind of shoves you in the back in a, in a fun way. And there's different driving modes as well. We've got all-wheel drive, we've got pure electric rear-wheel drive, a hybrid, individual, and power mode, which uses everything to the absolute max. <laughs> it doesn't give you a pure front-wheel drive experience, unless you do run out of EV range, which actually happened to James and I. If you don't regen the, the batteries as you're driving every once in a while, you'll just run out of EV. And then all of a sudden it becomes a very large, very heavy front wheel drive Volvo. That sounds like a four cylinder, because it is. But that's not really the point of this car. Obviously you drive it within its limits and you start to realize something. It really is all about attention to detail. For example, the panel alignment is absolutely second to none. It's perfect everywhere you look. The gaps are consistent. And down here, this little guard on the wheel well is carbon fiber. It didn't have to be, but it is. It's plastic on most cars. And the coolest part, in the trunk, is an entire science museum. You've got the entire EV side of the car on display. There's the DC charge plug, the AC charge plug, the, the, the ERAD L one, and then the MSD and the CIDD one as well. But the coolest part is that for the kids, there's a carbon fiber boomerang. <laughs> Look. Look at that, I love that. That's so cool. All right, the boomerang might not be real, but I'm trying to look for fun things about this car because it takes itself very, very seriously. And one thing that I've noticed is there's a strange kind of lack of, oh, four cylinder noises, lack of cohesiveness to the way that the power is delivered around. It's just, a, it's a bit strange, it really is. I, I can't tell if I'm enamored by it or I'm irritated by it. It's just different. I guess it has that going for it. It is very, very different. The i8 is interesting because it looks like a mid-engine supercar, but I feel like it just happens to be a mid-engine sports car. But what's cool about it is it is a plug-in hybrid, so it does have kind of multiple personalities. I put it into e-drive, maximum electric driving, power and speed reduced, which is not untrue, but power comes on really smoothly in EV. Although there really isn't much torque. Having just got out of something like a Taycan or a Tesla, the EV alone in this car is gonna feel really weak in comparison. But I don't need just EV mode. I flick it into sport. And it becomes a sports car once again. Unlike the batteries in the Polestar that Thomas is in, the batteries in this car are nice and low. They're right here in the center console. And even in sport mode, the damping's quite wonderful, and that's something I credit the Polestar 1 with, but this gets it too. It's very comfortable. You know, it's not slow. It's not slow. It's not quick, but it's not slow. Put it in pure electric rear-wheel drive EV mode, and... It's not very quick. But, make sure everything's turned on. That's where you get to experience the full Polestar 1. 
Here's the thing, this car is incredibly, immensely, mind-bendingly heavy, and it would have been way more heavy if they didn't basically rebuild the entire car in carbon fiber. And they gave it Olin's dampers. So this car basically goes around corners in a way that it has no business going around corners in, especially considering that the center of gravity is a little bit higher than that uh, I-8 that James is in. But the way that the Olin's dampers work, and the reason you would pay for Olin's, is because that initial bump damp is very soft, yet the body is really controlled until you do this thing that James always does in the reviews. You see him do it, he goes like this. <laughs> and then you start to feel the mass going back and forth. And you eventually realize that they didn't put Olin's on this car just because they wanted the most performance. They didn't put a carbon fiber body on it because they wanted it to be light and sporty. They did those things because they had to. And that's probably why the Taycan Turbo S that we drove, even though it weighs the same, handles way better than this. Because that was fundamentally built from the ground up to be an EV sports car. This is a, a very beautiful hodgepodge of parts and a, an engineering flex. Here's what we can do. That's what the Polestar 1 is. And for that reason, it's unique. Ten years from now, you see one of these in the road, you go, wow. Things like the Taycan will be dime a dozen. And the i8 is unchanged this year. It got a few updates a couple of years ago, including the Roadster, where they increased battery efficiency. However, despite the high price tag, the range of this doesn't touch the Polestar 1. The Polestar 1 has a combined over 700 kilometer range, not something the i8 can boast. But range aside, it doesn't weigh nearly as much as that Polestar and it drives so much lighter. Despite the skinny tires on the front not giving it that much grip, when I turn it in, it still feels like I'm driving something that's trying to be a sports car, not some quick, funky coupe that looks absolutely beautiful. Which we're gonna talk about in a minute, but before we do that, we're gonna switch drivers and we're gonna just have a little try of each other's car. So, oh come on Tom, I've never seen you get out of any car gracefully. I have a bad back, this I have was, a hard time getting out of a yeah, Corolla. Yeah, this was going to get you with the billionaire doors. The, what the, do you think of it? Um, it feels a lot more cohesive as a driving experience. It feels like it's very curated is the best word, by BMW, the sound and the, and the fake sound and the whole thing, right? Like it's very from the ground up built. This really does feel like Polestar took the Volvo and then added some electric stuff to it, then rebuilt it and adjusted the weight and tweaked it. I, I agree. I think a lot of that is weight management though. Like that feels low, the center of gravity is low. It feels yes. more sports car. That looks the way it drives. No, it doesn't. It, doesn't, it looks like a supercar. No, because, no, but not as a supercar. It looks like a hybrid, new tech, convertible thing. Okay, you, yes. You're judging it as a supercar. Yes. If you judge it by a supercar, that's like judging a fish by its ability to climb a tree. I think someone said that once. And, if, and they said, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, you need to stop judging fish, you judgy bitch. That's none of your jurisdiction, all right? That's, that's definitely how the proverb goes. That was yeah. what it is. Yeah. Anyway, this is a, a, a very different driving experience. This actually is quick. Yes. This that's, that's, looks quick. That's quick enough, though. This, it, quick, en quick enough is the best way yeah. I think you yeah, can yeah, possibly Yeah, no, This is real quick. This. But visually... It, yeah, it starts to not matter so much this because this is just so pretty. Just look at it. It's definitely one of the best proportioned and styled and like detailed coupes bear, on bear sale. Bear with me a second. Okay. Do you not think this looks like the most perfect rendition of an RS5? Do you not think there's like Audi vibes going on here with the rear three quarters? Yeah, the rear, yeah. This is what Audis want to look like. <laughs> it's that <laughs> understated beauty. Yes, understated beauty, perfect. Yeah, That's yeah. exactly it's what this is. It's muscular and at the same time, it's really pretty. It's like yes. Dwayne Johnson wearing a dress. <laughs> Would that be pretty? I don't know. He doesn't, I, even, he doesn't even need the dress. He's, he's just pretty as he's is. Pretty, yeah. Yes, and the reason for that, the, one of the main reasons, is that the entire top of the body is, I'm sure we've stated many times already, is carbon fiber, which means you get these. Yeah. These carbon fiber you can bond to a tiny radius. So if you look down the side here, you see that haunch at the end come to this like almost right angle. It's one of the coolest features I think I've seen on a car. It's, just, it's once, once you notice it, you can't look away at how sharp these corners are. Uh, but it is beautiful. And I think it's gonna be very timeless because of how minimalist it is. Minimalist? However, okay. I think 
And I wouldn't have said that about this in 2013. No. But I think this has aged really, really well. This is one of those cars that could have aged badly and it yeah. didn't. But I do think those Thor's hammer headlights are going to like stand the test of time. That's one of the best headlight designs I think I've ever seen. Yeah, don't look at the headlights on these because it has the worst warning oh. labels that you can see from a oh mile away. Oh my God, what were, why, why? I can't explain that. And what were they doing? If you read it, it says, Laser light. Do not stare into beam, but you have to get real close to, <laughs> to read it. Able to read so it. your eyes are melted. It's yeah. like staring into the eclipse. Yeah. It's like putting a danger cliff sign right at the edge of the cliff. It's really stupid. But no, I think it looks good and in robes to form. I would also like to point out that the fabric on the, I can't, this is a weird thing to point out, but the fabric on the soft top of this car is really nice. Yeah, it looks like fancy denim. It, fancy denim or like the stuff that a Scandinavian chair would be made out of. Don't start talking to me about chairs. I've been anyway, studying up. I've been studying up. You know what up. an Eames chair is now? I do know what an Eames chair right, is. Have a look at these chairs. Okay. Ooh, you can see I8 on my foot. It projects I8 on the ground, and now it's projecting it on my foot. Gimmicky, but very cool. Yes. Yeah, exactly. In fact, this whole interior is cool. It feels like this was meant for the I8. It feels bespoke. Yes, it also feels very well made. Because like this is really solid, the leathers are really high quality. But how often do we get in a BMW and we feel like it's the same interior as everything else? This has the carbon fiber that matches the entire manufacturing process of this car. Yes. It has a fair. steering wheel that you can't find in any other BMW. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, is that if this car came out right now, BMW, you know what they're like, they would just add the same bloody steering wheel they put in every car, like in the 5 Series, and the 3 Series, and the 7 Series, and the 8 Series. You think they get rid of the metal stuff? They would get rid of the metal no stuff. No one can destroy the metal. <laughs> The metal will strike you down with a vicious blow. <laughs> oh, so you guys deserve better than that. Yeah, probably. Uh, no, but it is wonderful in here. It's ergonomic and it's not just the look. There's That's drama. Awesome. Yeah, and, it, and cars like this need that because like it's like it's the future, right? And, well, credit to the Taycan. The Taycan yes. made that really futuristic spaceship. Yes, the Taycan sound. made some really cool That's noises. what the Polestar is missing. It doesn't have that sense of drama. Uh, yeah, but the Polestar is more like, ooh, I'm classy and sophisticated. I don't think this is not sophisticated and it's easy to use because... Enough classy though would be... Oh yeah, because it's got the old iDrive, which I like very, very much. It's simple. It's simple. It's easy. Like it doesn't need to be as complicated as it is. Blocks of information, I scroll through, I move on with my life. I don't have to think and decipher an infotainment system. If there are any gripes that I would have with the interior of this car, it doesn't come from the seating position or the seats because they're very comfortable. It comes from this one thing. Is it the, what's the coolest part about the, the, the engineering of this car? What's the actual coolest or what's the yes. perceived coolest? What is the actual coolest part? The carbon fiber? Yes, the carbon fiber tub, which is what this thing is made out of. I can't see it. No. And that's uncool. But this, that's, this is what tells you. Yeah, this is what tells you. But no, look, you can actually see a little bit of it here, but like this is this big cheap plastic thing. Well, and it's for what's how much on the inside that counts. Yeah, sure, yes. I want to be. I want to show it off. Give me some like alloys and the carbon fiber. Well, the billionaire mix. doors aren't enough of a show off thing. Yeah, right. That is pretty show offy. Yeah. It's as show offy as it gets actually in a car. I think is these doors. But no, I like this. There's some storage back there. There's not very much storage up here, but I do have a glove box, which is nice. Um, it's cool. I I I've, I haven't actually sat in one of these before, honestly, before I drove it today, and I will say that this has aged really, really well. Inside and out. Yeah. Well, let's go look at something brand new. Okay. Inside of a Volvo. Okay, it's not a Volvo. It's okay. a Volvo. It's not a Volvo. Okay, there's some Volvo stuff. Okay. Okay, here we go. Infotainment, that's Volvo. Steering wheel, that's Volvo, other than the new airbag logo. Gauge cluster is also Volvo, and it's, well, if there's any light shines on it ever, yeah, it's not you great. can't see it. Seats are Volvo. Seats are yellow Volvo. Yellow steering, so the, that's, the yellow steering, steering belts. The steering belts? Yeah, it's really advanced, this car. Yeah. The I yellow, only do one take on throttle house. The yellow seat belts. Oh, wow, this is just, okay. What's happened? I don't know, it's really attached to me. Um, oh, dear, okay. The yellow seat belt. These are the guys that invented seat belts. And that's then, true. And then let the whole world use them for that's free. That's true, Volvo literally invented seat And then now they've, they've forgotten where they've come from. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's happening there? Okay. Um, Any, anyway, but I have to say that Safety, safety, safety third. Um, yeah. So the, the attention to detail, as I was talking about earlier, still totally carries over into... Can you focus, please? Can we do this? Up here, we have this beautiful spar, yeah. trimmed in leather. These are trimmed in leather. We noticed this last time. Everything is trimmed in leather. It does feel very upscale. And the, 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 the rear view mirrors are frameless. It's a really cool look from in here. Anyway, speaking of details, up here is a little 
logo, a Polestar logo that like shines and reflects on the on the little amazing glass roof, yeah. by the way. And so you know where north is always. Yes, that's the reason why it's there. Okay, and in the back seat, these back seats, which are not usable for human beings, really. No. They look cool. The trimming of the leather is like this. This looks like a like a hand kind of hewn Navajo thing going on. And the little like zippers where you'd connect are like these little medallions. Well, even the ice, even the way the kids' seats fix in. Yes. Where other cars just do a black piece of plastic. It's like this chromed yeah, accent. They've made it look like a turbine of a jet. No, it's beautiful. It's all beautifully crafted. What a wonderful Volvo. It, it's not a... God. Anyway, carbon fiber. we got some of that going on. You had some. I've got some in here, right? These yeah. cars have so much in common. And yet they're so different. Very different. It's really strange. This is one of the weirdest comparisons we've ever done. It's I funky. Think. It is pretty funky. It's funky, but if we don't do it, no one else is no going to do it. No, we're doing this for you. Here's what we learned from the day. Objectively, for the price of these, you can get way, way better performance cars. You are effectively paying a novelty fee for a futuristic drivetrain, carbon fiber construction, striking one-off design, and in the case of the BMW, doors that go up. But if I had to choose, assuming I wouldn't buy a used i8 for 60 grand, which I would, then I would take the Polestar, because it represents one of the coolest designs this decade, and I can't get tired of looking at it. Aw, you took my line. Yeah, at that price, I'd get a Porsche Taycan. Still a futuristic EV. <sighs> James, that wasn't an option. Shh, it's always an option.